You know, he, he battled some injuries throughout training camp. So did Elijah. Um, gave Hasty some opportunities to really show some stuff in the preseason and look good. And then um, Elijah came in and um, looked a little, just to look a little bit ahead of him in the limited plays that he got. So, um, and no one was passing up Raheem. So you only can get three guys up. It's not an easy decision, but that's part of the NFL. Um, and now, but it's a matter of time. I mean, we haven't gone through a year here where we haven't started at least four different backs. Um, and now we're in a week two, and um, he's up regardless. And I expect him to come in and play at a high level and um, just keep getting better because, you know, there's a reason we drafted him. We got a lot of confidence in him. Um, but we got a lot of confidence in all our guys in this building right now. Kyle, you obviously, injury is a part of the NFL, but you guys seem to deal with more injuries than, than most. How do you guard against kind of a here we go again feeling when Jason and, and Raheem are, have serious injuries in the first game? Um, I mean, that's part of football. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be a therapist to everyone about it. Um, you know, I thought we got out of the game mostly healthy. Um, it was two unfortunate things for both of them. Um, fortunately, I think we'll get Raheem back um, later this year. So we got to make sure that guys hold down the floor while he's gone. You know, it's always a tough situation, but I, I mean, I'll believe in Jason until he doesn't want to do it. So when you can, if anybody can get through stuff like this, no matter how many times it's happened, it's, it's Jason. So he doesn't surprise me with anything. I don't think that's the stuff you want to think about right now, but um, Jason is a guy that I don't think there'll ever come a time that I want to want him to be a part of us. Will Jason stay with you guys uh, through the rest of this trip, or does he, does he head back? What's, what's kind of the process there? Uh, yeah, I think he's going to stay out here. Um, you know, got a different situation here, you know, not having to do all this stuff. But I think um, hopefully we can get his wife out here too um, so she can be with him for the week and um, hopefully keep him around a little bit at least. Um, but most of that's on him, but I know if he wants to be here and it helps him, um, I know how much we love having him around. Can we talk about the defense, Matt? Because I'm really excited about the 49ers defense. Well, you I mean, there were, there were plenty of things that need to be cleaned up. But I agree. I loved seeing D Ford back out there. I love seeing Nick Bosa back out there. Contavia Street gets a sack. I like this 49ers defense. Now, like I said, there are things that need to be cleaned up, and they've got a lot of film to watch to make some of those corrections. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't all that impressed with the 49ers defense in, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, the fourth quarter, no. You know, Let's look yeah, at but, the rest of the game. But up to that point, yeah, uh, Dre Greenlaw with the pick six. Oh, which, yeah, how did I which, leave Greenlaw out of that? Which really was, I think, a function of D. Ford getting good pressure on Jared Goff. And, of course, as you mentioned, D. Ford gets a sack and also created a, a holding penalty. Yeah, so D. Ford looked really good. And, man, I just think how far he's come. Because when that season ended in 2020 and throughout most of the offseason, we didn't know if D Ford would ever play football again. And I think he probably didn't know if he'd ever play football again. And the 40 hours certainly did not know if he'd ever play football again, but he looks good. And, you know, him coming off one edge, Nick Bosa coming off the other edge, you know, Samson Ebocom and just everybody. Uh, and now I think that that defense, the defensive line has got to pick up the slack with, with Jason Barrett out and with kind of the moving parts in the defensive backfield, it, it really is on them now to, to even take their game to another level because that's what it's going to require as the 49ers, uh, you know, try to compensate for the loss of, of one of their better defensive players in Jason Barrett. Another thing that I thought was pretty interesting was how much Trent Sherfield played. And we've been talking about this, that he really looked good in training camp. And we didn't know much about him as a wide receiver. He was a special teams guy with the Cardinals. But we had also talked about Brandon Ayuk, you know, not really having a great camp. Now, he was also injured. He had a hamstring injury, so he, he kind of missed some, some time. But it's pretty clear that Trent Sherfield worked his way into a position where the 49ers know that he can be somebody who's relied upon, counted upon. And so it was, it was good to see him get his first touchdown catch since the 2018 season. And this guy is not just a special teams player. He is a pretty darn good wide receiver. And Brandon Ayuk better get on his horse uh, if he's going to get back that playing time that he carved out for himself last season. So I, 
I'm still high on Brandon Ayuk, believe me. But he's got to show a little better sense of urgency and get out there. I mean, I really thought going into the season, he was a better, he was going to have more catches, more receiving yards than Debo Samuel. And of course, Debo Samuel had a huge game for the 49ers, career high in yardage.